So we are in Introduction to Statistical Learning. Uh, we're in Chapter 5, uh, and uh, we're on Question 3, part of the conceptual questions. Okay, so here's the question. So we're going to review k-fold cross-validation. Uh, so first we're going to explain how it's implemented, what it is, and how it stacks up against uh, two other uh, validation approaches, which is the validation set approach and the leave one out cross validation approach. So, okay, so um, so for part A, so I've written kind of a one step at a time type thing here, um, and maybe slightly over technical language, um, but uh, but you can read through this. Um, but basically, we take a data set and we divide it into k different subsets. Um, and so K might be 10 or something. And so now we have all sorts of, we have K subsets that I'm calling little d. Okay? And so for each subset, each individual subset, d sub i, we train, a, we train a model on all of the data not included in d sub i that I'm calling d sub negative i. Okay? So we exclude d i from this particular run of the model training. And from that run, we, we estimate certain parameters um, that I'll call p sub not i. Okay? And then we apply those parameters to di, the data that was excluded. And the idea is that we're going to try to predict the outcome of the withheld data with um, its predictor variables by applying the different uh, the parameters that we estimated from the run of the model that did not include that data. So, um, and so then we do this for all D subsets, and we measure the, the predictive error uh, in each, uh, for each subset. And then if we're running several models, we can tally up their total error across all D subsets, or all K subsets, <clears throat> and we can see how the models are comparing to one another, right? The ones that are making fewer errors will, will tend to think are better models. Okay. Um, <clears throat> part B is what are the advantages of k-fold cross-validation relative to the validation set approach where we just have, uh, where we just divide our data maybe in half or 70% training, 30% testing or something like that. Uh, and the leave one out cross-validation where we're essentially performing k-fold cross-validation um, but uh, but we have um, but our the size of each of our sub data subsets is one, right? So in other words, we withhold an observation, train the model on everything, but that observation, and try to predict that observation. Okay. So I put it into a table here. Um, so first discussing the validation approach, validation set approach, and then leave one out cross validation, and then advantages compared to k-fold cross validation, and then the disadvantages here. Um, <clears throat> you can read through these, but basically the validation set approach is simpler and it uh, takes less time. <clears throat> but the problem is, is that it tends not it tends to uh, not give as good uh, estimate of the error of the model because you're only really testing it once, right? Um, you, you know, you're you're only testing your uh, your model against one subset of data, um, so um, so it has higher bias. Depending on how you look at this, you might say that it has high, that it gives higher variance, right? Because if we were to, um, well, because because if we were if we were to run this many many times, um, then uh, then it wouldn't have necessarily high variance, right? Because um, because by taking such large chunks of data to train on and then to test on we're ironing out some of that variance. But by just doing it once, um, then uh, then there could be, you could think about that as having high variance because we're just doing, we're just splitting it once. So anyway, I think it depends a little bit on how you think about it. Um, but uh, I think the important part for disadvantages with validation set is it's just typically going to give worse um, estimates of the model error. Now, on the other hand, leave one out cross-validation it has some advantages. Uh, one is that uh, it will tend to have low overfitting risk and low bias, right? And, um, uh, well, anyway, um, so so that's good. 
But the problem, or one of the problems with leave one out cross validation is now you have, you know, basically n or n minus one, I can't remember, uh, data sets that you have to train. And so if you have a, if you have a model that takes a little bit of time to run, well, now you're going to have to do it n times or close to n times. Okay, so that can be um, a little bit problematic. Um, and, uh, and also, um, so uh, it, it, it could have, it could have larger variance than the k-fold cross validation. Um, that does not mean that it's, uh, that it's error, uh, that it's, um, that it's, that it's accuracy in measuring error is worse than the k-fold cross validation, but it may have higher variance, but it has lower bias. So anyway, um, you can read through these, uh, but we'll call that good.